You need to understand the reference and coterminal angles pretty well in order to deal with trigonometry. Uh, that is the first step to go from geometry thinking to trigonometric and algebraic thinking. So first of all, let's think about can an angle be negative? And in geometry, we would say no, because angle, remember, it's the way um, how much your angle opens. So if I have two rays, they are overlap, then the angle is zero. But then if I open the second ray, then the angle becomes bigger and bigger. So we have acute angles, then we have a right angle obtuse angles and a straight angle and that's it we cannot really do anything else if i go this way now i'm back to obtuse angle right angle and acute angle but in algebra uh, in trigonometry angles actually can be negative because if you notice i was taking this ray and then i was rotating it in a counterclockwise direction like so so that means that my angle is positive However, if I would start rotating this angle, I would start at the original position, and then I start rotating it in the clockwise direction, then now my angle is going to be negative angle. So let's write that down first. Um, so if I rotate angle in this direction, that is positive. And then if I rotate angle in this direction, that is a negative direction clockwise um, and the angle opens up well to some um, degree measure theta now this side the original side of the angle is called the initial side initial side and it is a ray and then the second side of the angle the one that I was just rotating that one is called a terminal side that is where angle terminates. So now we figured out that angles, yes, they can be positive, they can be negative. On the coordinate plane, the angles are placed like this. So the end point of the ray it is at the origin, and the initial side goes along the x-axis. I didn't want to do that. And the terminal side, the end point is also going to be at the origin, and then the terminal side is going to go somewhere in one of the quadrants. Now you can see that it's relatively easy to remember the quadrants because if the angle starts rotating from here, from this position, uh, or the terminal side uh, starts rotating from this position, then the terminal side will have to go through quadrant 1, then quadrant 2, then quadrant 3, then quadrant 4. If I have an angle in this position, I can just simply measure it with the protractor and then let's say I measured my angle 60 degrees. Right, um, But then what if I took my original side and then I, well, my original uh, terminal side, and then instead of going 60 degrees like this, I actually went around the circle and then another 60 degrees, and then I stopped like that. So in other words, the path that this side made was like this. So now it's 60 degrees plus 360 degrees, which is going to be 420 degrees. The 420 degrees and 60 degrees, those are co-terminal angles because they have the same terminal side. Co-terminal angles, they have the same terminal side. Co is like colleagues, right? Co-workers. So they have the same co uh, they have the same terminal side. That's why they called co-terminal angles, 60 and 420. So the difference between those angles is 360 degrees. That is the difference between co-terminal angles. So if I drew an angle, maybe goes like this, right? And if maybe I'm thinking that oh my angle just went this far, then maybe this angle would be 150 degrees. Or maybe it went a couple of times around and then it would be 150 plus 360 degrees. 150 plus 360 degrees, which is 510 degrees. Okay, so they are coterminal angles. Um, next, let's talk about reference angles. The reference angles is another very, very important part of trigonometry. 
and the reference angle is the angle between the terminal side and the x-axis. So it is always measured to the x-axis. So this is the reference angle. So let's say my original angle was 60 degrees. I'm in quadrant 1. It's very simple. The reference angle is still going to be the same as the original angle. Nothing fancy about that. Now, it gets more interesting when we get to the other quadrants. In quadrant 2, let's say this angle was, um, I don't know, 160 degrees. Yeah, ends with 60. So that was the original angle. Now, the reference angle is going to be this angle right here. It's between the terminal side and the x-axis. So that is the angle. We know that the straight angle is going to be 180 degrees. So now I'm a little bit short of 180. So I'm a little bit short. I have to subtract 160 degrees. And my reference angle here is going to be 20 degrees. If I look at this angle here, let's say it was um, 200 and, I don't know, 50 degrees. Okay, changing it a little bit. 250 degrees. Now it's more than 180. So to find this reference angle, again, it's down to the x-axis, uh, or in this case, up, I guess, to the x-axis. So to find this reference angle, now I have to do 250 minus 180 degrees, which is going to be 70 degrees, right? And finally, if I am in quadrant 4, now this is very tempting when the angle is very close to y-axis. Very often students think about, oh, this is the reference angle right here. It's very cute, this little angle. So that is definitely the one. Well, that is not the one. So the angle is calculated, the reference angle is calculated to the x-axis again. So it's going to be this one. Now x-axis is one full rotation, which is 360 degrees. And then I'm subtracting this angle, which let's say it was 280 degrees. So 360 minus 280 is going to be 80 degrees. So here we go. All our reference angles, you can see they are acute angles. They are 80 degrees. In this case, it was 70 degrees. In, case, in this case, it was 20. And then in the first quadrant, it was just the, um, just the angle itself. So how do you calculate coterminal and reference angles without the diagram? Well, coterminal angles, as we said, the difference between the coterminal angles is 360 degrees. So if I see I have 710, I would simply subtract 360, and then I would get 350 degrees. I shouldn't have said equal. So coterminal angles are 710 and 350. Now, how do I calculate the reference angles? I know the, the reference angle. I know that 350 is almost to 360. It's going to be in quadrant 4. So I have to do 360 degrees minus 350 degrees. And then I would get that reference angle is 10 degrees. Okay, now let's take a look at the negative angle. Negative 53, I actually have to add... 360 to get my coterminal angle in within the first rotation. So 360 minus 53, that is 307 degrees. And again, I'm in fourth, in fourth quadrant. So if I do 360 minus 307, well, guess what? I'm going to get 53 degrees, right? Negative 53. My reference angle is going to be positive 53 degrees. That's an ugly five. Okay, same thing with 900, negative 900 degrees. However, if I do, if I start with negative 900 degrees and then I add 360 once, I'm going to get negative 540. So I need to keep adding 360. If I add it again, I will get negative 180. And then I will have to keep adding 360 degrees until I hit my angle within the first 360 degrees. So I had to add it three times and I got 180 degrees. Now 180 degrees together with 90 degrees, 270 degrees, 0 degrees, 360 degrees, those are special angles because they are on the axis and those angles are called quadrantal angles. Quadrantal angles. So 180 degrees, the reference angle is just zero because the difference between 180 and 180 is 
zero. So that is coterminal and reference angles in a nutshell, very briefly. Um, I hope that it was helpful and you are uh, all set with your trigonometry classes.